have a bone to pick with the built-in glow effect inside DaVinci Resolve. I also have a bone to pick with mic arms. Like mine just broke. I don't, I'm not doing this by choice. <laughs> Um, so, but we're making do, we're gonna do this. Let me show you the issue and let me show you what I'm used to coming from Adobe. There's a really cool plugin called Deep Glow and that is my all time favorite glow. It just looks nice on everything. And it's not that I'm expecting that inside Resolve, especially with a free effect that's just coming stock right inside Resolve. But like, it's just so far from it that I just can't, I can't use it at all. So let me, let me get a little bit better situated here and uh, l let me just show you what it looks like inside After Effects first to give you a better understanding. And then I'm going to show you how I built what I think is a better glow and a more simple glow. So this is After Effects and this is my favorite plugin called Deep Glow. You can see it's pretty crazy right off the start, but I dial in my settings pretty much the same every time and it's somewhere around here. And the really cool thing I love about this is that it actually has chromatic aberration built right in. So hit that and you can see, it just adds like a little bit of flair, a little bit of vintage vibe right in the, on the edges there. And that's like kind of the basis of how I build a lot of my motion graphics. I use glow, I give it a little bit of shake and then I add some like noise on top of it. And let me show you in Resolve what happens if I add glow and why, why, why does it look like that? I even have some text here. Okay. So we got just text plus doesn't even do anything there. Like, and like granted, I haven't touched the dials. I haven't like gone in and changed the things, but like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, <laughs> I just want it to work. Stay with me here for a second, because I want you to learn this if you learn nothing else from this video because we're gonna actually build a glow effect. But here is the hack that I've used in every single program when I'm like, oh, I just want like a really quick glow. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take your layer, say I have this logo, I'm gonna duplicate it, and I'm just gonna type in, I want a little Gaussian. On the bottom layer, I'm gonna drop it, boom, and we're done. So I want it to be that fast. I use this all the time when I'm in a pinch and I think it works. But for my purposes of like trying to get it closer to that deep glow look that we looked at, I think it's still a little bit of ways. I'm sure the glow inside Resolve works great if you know how to use it. I just don't. And I don't think it works for my purposes of like on text and logos and like the motion graphic side of it. In the Fusion page, it actually has a decent glow. So let's just type in glow. Still not what I kind of thought but we're getting there. Like this is, this is good. So still not exactly what I want. It's, it's like just a little finicky, like that's good, but it's not there. Okay. Like, and there's three, I don't know really what the difference is. More controls on each one. They must be four specific things, but glow and soft glow are very similar. Uh, we'll take the threshold down, but still it's almost there. It's just not quite. Here's the tool that I built and we're just going to take simple glow and boom. And we have way more controls. We got grain, halation, and we got an RGB split. And that is what we're going to be looking at today. So let's dive in to the node tree. I hate this mic setup. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make a merge node and we're going to drag it over here. You might be like, what is going to happen? And we're going to copy and we're actually going to paste an instance of this. This is going to be very crucial in a second. So we're going to do basically what we just did on the edit page. We're going to add a Gaussian blur or a regular blur, whatever you prefer. And we're going to make a blur. I'm going to preview it in our window two by press two here. And we're just going to drag up the blur. Mm, I'm going to say maybe like 40. And because we have this instance that's going to go on top with our merge, basically our glow. I think that's a little bit too much. So let's dial that back down to 20. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to instance it and put it on top. So now we have a little bit of a stronger glow. Like I want to see what it would look like on black. We're four seconds in and we're already in a better spot because you can just make a macro and this is it. So when I instance this blur, I actually also do something very crucial and I drag down the blend a little bit. 
blurring something that's already blurred just gives it a little bit more soft softness but taking down the opacity of each uh, layer is pretty crucial in the way that I kind of think about it and to get closer to that deep glow look. So I added a Gaussian blur in the mix of all this stuff and you can see that it just spreads everything out. So the next thing I'm going to add is prism blur to get that chroma shift. So if we look at this, I take the blur out of this. I don't use this for the blur. You could, I don't, and I'll show you in a second why I do that. I like to crank this all the way up. And now if we head back over, this is why I don't use the prism blur for a blur is because I want to be able to turn this off and on by itself. So I think the distance is a little crazy, but yeah, you get that little bit of just hue shift and that's all we want it for. It plays a really big difference in creating like a vibe. So one more crucial thing to have in here. Well, not crucial, but the road and dilate node is a really cool node. Probably one of my favorites. Dial this into Gaussian. Let's just take a preview of what this does here. Kind of acts as like a threshold. So if we go back to our merge node and you dial down, this node is almost working as like a brightness node for it because it's really putting a threshold on how bright it can be or like really boosting the volume of like how high those highlights hit. I know it's a weird way to describe it, but that's kind of how I think about it. The next step here is I don't always want my glow to be reflecting the color that it is. Maybe I want a custom color. So the next thing we're gonna do is add a color compressor or a color generator. Either one will work because what you're gonna do inevitably is um, just take the alpha. So we're gonna make it red for this case and then I'm gonna add an alpha multiply. In this case, we're using PNG, but if we were using text, it would just take that. And that is also another reason that we're trying to like instance things here. Without this media one instance, this effect wouldn't work, which is like effectively taking this bottom layer, which we had on the edit page, and then we're duplicating it and we're putting it on the top. And that's, we're basically doing the same thing, just way more efficient in Fusion. So if we preview our out now, uh, you can see that we have a red glow. Cool, great. All I've done basically for the tool that I built is just add in controls to say, I don't want color, turn that off. Or I don't want RGB split, turn that off. So in the tool that I built, I used a halation node and I made it here uh, with a lot of tweaking just because like this one is also confusing for no reason. Um, I mean, for reason, it's it can do a lot. And then on top of that, what I did in the end of my tool that I built was I added grain. This is a great tool. I find it, it's a little bit heavy, uh, like CPU intensive. So I kind of want to turn this off. And I just think it that adds like so much. I love that like softened look. I'm working on like a 16 mil inspired text pack right now where I basically use this same approach in pretty much everything. I like to just soften it up and add grain. And like these two nodes, I feel like just make it stylized like all of a sudden i feel like that's like such a stylized hack almost but yeah like if you turn these off you can see it's like cool yeah logo glow and then you turn on the blur and the grain and then if you had like a little bit of camera shake here and like let's just bring that way down to like maybe like 0.2 i think that just goes so, like such a long way uh and adding that like little jitter i think really sells it yeah, that's my super simple approach to making a glow. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope that I figure those out soon. <laughs> thank you for watching. Head to the link in the description to download the simple glow tool that I made. And yeah, hope that you enjoyed this and get to making motion graphics. See ya.